I know Facebook seems to have its ups and downs with the general public. One day it's okay, and the next day it's the worst thing on earth. I've never swayed how I feel about Facebook. It's always been amazing to me. It's 99% positive. It's people sharing their stories, life, successes, failures, and if you look through the comments on normal people's posts, it is also very, very positive. I know one thing that got to people and when Facebook took a bunch of heat was when the pixel had you tracked, it could follow you to a cooperating website. This has never bothered me, of course, as a marketer, but to tell you the truth, I've never been a person that just scrolls through feed where you would see the majority of the ads. There's nothing wrong with scrolling your feed, of course, especially if you time block it and you do want to engage with family, friends, even clients posts. But I only use Facebook as a tool and navigate to where I need to be and one of those places is Facebook groups. Extremely underrated are the value of Facebook groups, not what you can take but way more importantly what you can give. In this video I'm going to go over the three ways I suggest finding, engaging and you want to stick around to the end where I show an amazing way to post in Facebook groups not just to grow your personal brand but your real estate business. Just quickly though if you find these videos helpful consider consider liking and subscribing. It means an absolute ton to me, but let's just dive right into the video. First, finding and joining local community Facebook groups in your area. Simply utilize the Facebook search bar and search your area and communities. Scroll down on the left-hand side and filter for groups. As you can see, for a search of Kitchener-Waterloo, which is my area, you will have a bunch to go through. Try to find the ones that are relevant to your community. You can easily tell by the name, then you can go check if it's a public or private group. Public groups usually accept you immediately and private groups may have questions and pending times for approval. You can see how many members a group has and also how active it is by the daily post count. To join, just go to the right here and sometimes it will give you the option to join as yourself or your page. Okay, so I suggest joining as your profile, as yourself. I have experimented in the past with joining Facebook groups as a page. As you can see here, this is my business partner's page. One positive about joining a group as your page, if they accept you, if it's allowed, is that you can invite people to like your page if they've engaged or commented on one of your posts. In my opinion, it's just not worth it. Join as your profile and start to build rapport. It's not a good look joining a Facebook group if they'll have you as your page. I've definitely found that. Once you choose your profile, you join the group here at the bottom, and as you can see on public groups, you can often be automatically accepted. Keep scrolling down and looking for more community groups. This one here, for instance, Kitchener-Waterloo Community and Real Estate Information. If I had to guess, this group is probably run by a real estate agent or broker, and it's a very smart thing to do to start your own. What's interesting about this person naming their group and real estate information at the end is that you are being open and upfront with everyone about the content you are looking to have inside your group. If you know me by now, I love niching down. So maybe you'll get less people that join the group because of this, but the people that do join will be significantly more valuable and the ones that you would like to engage with. Running an active Facebook group can be tricky, but I'll save that for a later video. So if we join this group, as you can see, it says pending. So the person that runs this group hasn't set up questions. You always want to set up questions for people joining the group just to get to know them and to make sure the wrong people aren't joining. You don't want random people in your group just trying to DM people or actual bad actors. Questions can help with that. It obviously doesn't always work, but it does help. If we scroll down to Kitchener slash Waterloo this and that, for instance, it's a private group as well. They have it set up that you can't join as your page, as you can see. See, it doesn't even give you the option. You can only join as your profile, which is a great setting to set up. And when you join the group, you will be prompted with questions. As someone who runs a couple Facebook groups, do yourself a favor and answer all the questions fully when joining groups. You might as well be personable when answering these questions as well. These Facebook community groups are fantastic. Let your personality even shine through while answering the questions. She, I say she because I actually know who runs 
this group mentions that it's not a buy-sell group, which is smart. There are tons of those groups and you want to keep that type of stuff separate. Keeping a good group active goes hand in hand with keeping out all of the off-topic subjects and spam. And of course, after answering at the bottom when asking to join, you'll want to agree to all of the group rules as well. If you do what I did to stay organized, I have all of my groups bookmarked and it's the best way when you are getting started as well. As you can see here, I've experimented with as page, which I don't suggest, and I have a folder for pending as well. Once you have the groups that you like and are a part of, it will be easy to navigate to them on the Facebook platform, but organizing what's out there and which ones I wanted to join at the start, I made these bookmarks to stay organized. I even have some potentials down here. I try not to join a million groups. I haven't went into any selling groups really, so I don't know about those at all. Here's a big one on the Leafs that I thought about, even a little lower, I debated uh, Nerd Knight in Kitchener Waterloo. That's probably one I should join. It might actually be right up my alley. Okay, so that's exactly how I searched and joined Facebook groups. And you can actually go way more niche than that. Not just your cities, but into the suburbs as well. And if you search your suburb in the Facebook search bar and you don't find one, or the one you like is not run well, by all means, start your own as a real estate agent. Okay, let's move on to step two, engaging. You have to start right away by giving back to the group and definitely change that mindset. If you can just change it completely, that you now want to give instead of take, doors will just start to open up for you. It's the best mentality to have. It's 100% how I live my life and the connections you make and the people you meet that enter your life are amazing. Answer people's questions in the group, engage with their successes and their failures, be an asset to the group, don't take from it. Don't use a group, be part of it. Try to give back. 20 times for every one post you make. And even with that one post, make it valuable for the group. Don't try to take people out of the group by trying to invite them to webinars or your email list or even your website or something like that. Don't try to randomly DM them. If they make a post, engage on that post, keep it within the platform in the group. If you do DM them, make a small introduction, make it personable at least that you are in the same group and if you had any questions or something that related to their question or answer that needed to be a little bit more personable. But yes, try to keep the value that you provide related to that group, which does lead us to step three, posting. I'll show you an example of what myself and my partner did in one of the biggest groups in our area, Food in the Waterloo Region, which has a huge 42,000 plus members at the time of this video. After engaging and providing value to the group, as mentioned, we made a post we were curious about and what we were going to be creating a video on based on their answers. Our post was, what are the top three places for wings in Waterloo Region? It's what we wanted to know and what we were going to be creating a video on. It got an amazing amount of engagement on our first post when we were just asking the questions. We went through after three days and added up all of the possible answers and got our top three. With those three places, we reached out to the owners and managers and actually came by for a short taste testing and an interview. This was a fantastic way to get clients. First, the owners and the managers absolutely love us. We are promoting their business. And while there, of course, we're talking to front of house staff, we're talking to cooks, and everyone is leaving there, or should I say, we are giving everyone to leave there with our business cards. In our video now, when we shared it from our page into the group, the group gets mentioned at the start of the video, which keeps them engaged until the end. They are getting to know us, like us, and of course, the best wings in Waterloo Region. We are very on topic for a Facebook group called the Food in Waterloo Region. This was just one way to grow your personal brand in a Facebook group while providing value to them and while possibly getting future clients that would reach out to you. But that's just one example. Maybe the most fun way I find, I do love video, but just engaging, sharing photos, helping people, your efforts won't go unnoticed. And if you're just being yourself, this will attract like-minded people into your life. I really hope that helped. Facebook groups are just one part of why I still think 
Facebook is an amazing platform for real estate agents. I could literally go on for days about it. If you have any questions or comments, reach out. You can DM, email, comment on this video. I get back to everyone. My name is Callum Moore, eXp Realty real estate agent here in Ontario. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.